It's a Man Crush Monday. Join Professor Buzzkill as he crushes on men from history who deserve more fame and glory. Okay, yes indeed, it is Professor Buzzkill. Here we are in the Buzzkill bunker, safe from all the incoming fire from the haters and the historical revisionists and the people who don't know what they're talking about, about history. And we're really happy because we do have someone who knows what he's talking about, about history. And that, of course, is Professor Nash from Penn State University. How are you, Professor? I'm doing great. I barely made it here alive. But did I you made really? It. Yeah. Made it. Well, it's, it's comforting here in the bunker. It's underground. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's protected by all sorts of things. But well, again, we're so happy to have you back because people get tired of listening to me and they want to hear you. Keep asking, Aww. when are we going to have another Nash cast? And this is one of them. And not only is it a Nash cast, it's a Man Crush Monday Nash cast. This is someone you think deserves a lot more attention than he's gotten. Who is he? Absolutely. This is Umrao Singh Yadav. Umrao his, Singh Yadav. That's his full name, although I think he's usually referred to as just Umrao Singh. That's, how mm-hmm. it is. that's, mm-hmm. how, that's the shorthand, and I'll, and I'll use that term. Yeah, yeah okay. he, is, uh, he was one of 31 British Indian Army soldiers awarded the Victoria Cross during World War II. Only and, 31 and the long. Victoria Cross, you might know more about this than I do, but the Victoria yeah. Cross is essentially the British Empire's uh, main or highest medal for valor. Medal of honor, yeah. Sort of yeah, yeah, essentially the medal of honor. Uh, they're, they're pretty rare. They're pretty hard to get. And so 31 British Indian Army soldiers received this during World War II. Umrao Singh was one of them, and he was also the only non-commissioned officer in either the Royal Artillery or the Royal Indian Artillery to receive the Victoria Cross in World War II. Okay. And that shouldn't be surprising. Artillery folks usually are yeah. a little bit behind the line. Yeah, so the sort so of they valor have, doesn't seem sure. To, they have fewer opportunities to do the sort of thing that might earn you earn you a Victoria right, okay. Cross. And we should tell the bus killers, by the way, that you know there are hundreds of thousands of of soldiers in the British Indian Army. This Absolutely, is not a small force. No, in fact, uh, in case I forget to not mention, just a it, it is the simply the largest volunteer army ever in human history. Wow, two point five million folks uh, served in the British Indian Army. So he was Punjabi. He was born in mm-hmm. 1920 in a small village in Haryana, which is in north mm-hmm. central India. He joined the Indian Army, I believe, in late 1939 and was promoted to sergeant in the Royal Indian Artillery in 1942. Right. Okay. So the war's already started. Yeah. He serves He's, almost the entire war in yeah. uniform. Yeah. Okay. So what did he do not only to deserve the Victoria Cross, but to deserve becoming a, a, a Man well, Crush Monday what subject? What did he do? Well, on the night of the 15th to 16th of December 1944 in Burma, yeah. he commanded a field gun detachment close to the front. Mm-hmm. And after a 90-minute bombardment, the, the Japanese attacked his position with at least two infantry companies. Yikes. So it's, it's not just him, obviously, this is this whole battery, but yeah. still, two infantry companies, that's probably at least around 200. Okay, let's remind people that the Burma is in the southeast. That's right. This it's is in, in yeah. This right. is in the Asian theater. This is mm-hmm. where the British Commonwealth forces are fighting against the Japanese, trying to liberate Burma from the Japanese, which the Japanese had right. taken in 1942. Okay. So his position comes under a very strong Japanese attack. He uses his Bren gun, which is a light machine gun, and def- directs the defense of the position. Yep. He sustains two shrapnel wounds, but the first attack is successfully re- repulsed. Okay. The second attack is also, the second Japanese attack is also repulsed, but kills all but Singh and two other gunners. So there are only three guys oh, left yeah. at their position now. And at the start of the third attack, these three quickly start to run out of ammunition. Huh. So apparently Singh picked up what was called a gun bearer. What is, what is it, a gun bearer? It's, it's, a, it's a piece of equipment. In it sounds the, like it, a person, but it's not. It's a piece of no, equipment. No, it's, okay. it's, it's a piece of equipment in the artillery business, which apparently is just a little bit like a crowbar. The artillery business. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. that, yes, that's yeah. the official term. Yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah we, got the, we have our own yes, special buzzkill language here. He was a, he was a here leading in the entrepreneur in the artillery business. <laughs> yeah, okay. So he picked up this gun bearer and started swinging it, and he was seen by witnesses to strike down at least three Japanese uh, infantrymen with it. Okay, so he's not shooting them. He's no, he's out of ammunition. With crowbar. So he is yes, he's engaging. Uh, he's some manual labor, I guess you could say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Six hours later, an Allied counterattack retook the position. Singh was found unconscious with a massive head wound, but alive. Yeah, his gun bearer is still in his hand. Again, this is the, the this crowbar, is the, yeah, yeah the big hunk of metal. 
Around the position, 10 Japanese soldiers, 10 dead Japanese soldiers were found. Wow. This sounds so, like a, a Sergeant York situation. Kind of. Yeah, we don't know how many uh, or whether it was all 10 of those who were his responsibility, but mm-hmm. still, he was mm-hmm. found alive, surrounded by 10 Japanese soldiers. You can draw your own conclusions. He was awarded the Victoria Cross in 1945. Served in the in the post war the independent Indian Army in nineteen from nineteen forty seven to nineteen sixty five, and he died in two thousand five on his eighty fifth birthday. Oh wow, lives eighty five. Okay, okay. So, but why? Why again? Buzzkillers. We we often well we have been doing a number of World War Two themed shows, and one of the things we try to do is to say you know there, there's a special reason why we highlight so many of these men and women fighters on the Allied sides in World War Two is because. The Japanese militarism German, and German militarism was so vicious right. that this the 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 people who do, who uh, t- defend against them, try to attack against them, really do deserve a right. lot more credit. Well, and also, I mean, and I think I think is emblematic of, of something larger. Which and you can yes, say you can say this a lot about a lot of Medal of Honor winners too. Which is each Victoria Cross winner, you could say, deserves their own their own recognition, their own yeah, show. Sure. You, I easily could have picked one of the other thirty one. But I think he he's a good choice. He's emblematic of, of the often overlooked contribution of these 2.5 million troops in the British Indian Army. 2.5 2. million. 2.5 million who contributed massively to the Allied victory. 87,000 of them died mm-hmm. on many fronts, not just mm-hmm. in Burma, but also mm-hmm. in East Africa, in North Africa, in Italy, in the Middle East. They right. served all over the place. With distinction, even though they served with distinction, they weren't necessarily treated with distinction. No, not after the war, not in India, because remember, India gets its independence in 1947. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and so there, these members of the British Indian Army, they are looked down upon, and yeah. they, uh, first of all, they were they were not treated equally in the British Imperial Army right. either. Uh, Churchill infamously did not have very high regard for them. They were paid less while they were in the army. And then afterwards, once India gets its independence, they are ignored and they are also denied pensions by the independent uh, Indian government. Now, does this mean that the the, the, the the new Indian government, the newly independent Indian government, is looking at these soldiers who had just fought to protect, partly protect, protect India as sort of having been British stooges pretty or much, something? Pretty much, wow. right, that they, they, they fought to preserve the British Empire. Wow. Which most of them would, would, would see... Uh, uh, as completely unfair. Keep in mind also that during World War II, there was this other thing called the Indian National Army, which was formed by the Japanese from yeah. Indian troops who had been captured by the Japanese in the fall, after the fall of Malaya and Singapore in 1942. The Japanese okay. basically said, look, we're going to put together an army. You can fight for your independence. Who's in? Okay, so this so, makes it even more complicated. Absolutely. It's super complicated. So tens of thousands of these folks did join the Indian National Army and they fought alongside the Japanese in Burma. And there were some cases where the Indian, basically Indian fought Indian. Yeah. In Burma. Wow. So it's sort of like in Vichy, France, right? You had French, yeah, French, yeah, French sure, Frenchmen sure, fighting against Frenchmen sure. in, in the Middle East. And of course, after independence, or maybe not of course, but the Indian National Army, those folks who had fought alongside the Japanese, they were lionized. They were given pensions. They were considered the great Okay, because of course they're partly, well, they thought of partly right. helping overthrow the British. Right. But as you said a minute ago, it is complicated. The British Indian Army troops took an oath to the king, that's true, and many of them sort of clung to that oath, yeah. but they were also fighting for ultimate independence. The British made certain guarantees or certain right. promises about that's independence. Right. And so they figured, look, I'm fighting for the British Empire, but I, it's not like I'm, I'm not a stooge. I'm fighting for, I'm fighting for the future of India and, and Indian independence. And then the British famously dragged their feet. Of course, and, of course. And it was that it was also complicated. But keep in mind also the INA, they're not just fighting for Indian independence. They're fighting alongside the Japanese. Right. So run the thought experiment. Let's say Jap- Japan wins World War II or Japan, the Japanese conquer India. Are they really going to give India its independence? Right, right, right. Look right, right. at the way the Japanese behaved every place else. They right. Didn't, they didn't give people their independence. No. So it is at minimum complicated. Yeah. And keep in mind, there were 62 British Indian Army soldiers for every one Indian Army, sorry, Indian, Indian National. National Army soldier, 62 yeah, yeah. to 1. Okay. Right? And so, I mean, a cynic would say, at least they're going to save a lot of money on pensions uh, after yeah, World yeah. War II. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, what, but I would say my bottom line would be this. Whatever you think about their decision to fight for the British Empire, you cannot deny their contribution to the cause of crushing the Axis. Right, which again, we keep coming back to, is has this sort of moral... Yes. righteousness and moral necessity to it. Right. It isn't just, World War II is so awful, it isn't like just any other war. Right. You know, it has 
these two really genuinely evil right. s- and, things. And as we've often tried to do in the show is you're trying to do things. One hand, co- on the one hand, capture the complexity, mm-hmm. including the moral complexity. Mm-hmm. But on the other hand, never lose sight of the bottom line, which is crushing the axis was absolutely necessary. And yeah. people like Umrao Singh were absolutely essential to that process. Well, there you have it, Buzzkillers. Umrao Singh, who genuinely deserves to have his own Man Crush Monday. Talk to you next week. Mm-hmm.